Hi everyone, I'm really excited uh, to be here. So let's start. Um, I personally believe that the future of knowledge work will eventually be remote. So in some sense, we all got to experience the future in the last few months. However, this might not have been what you hope for. Uh, because setting up a collaborative environment for your data science team can be challenging even when working side by side in an office. At Upsilon, we spent years developing efficient uh, systems for remote collaboration. And in this presentation, I will cover the best practices that work for us. Um, so I'm uh, Olga Mirzva-Sulima and I'm a senior data scientist and an experienced project leader at Upsilon. I have a background in econometrics and my main technological stack at work is R. Um, I have been building our community uh, here in Warsaw since uh, 2014. In, uh, I plan to cover three areas in my talk. So project management, doing effective code reviews, and setting up a painless development environment in R. So when it comes to project management, almost all of the projects that we run in Upsilon are managed with Scrum approach with small variations. At the beginning of the project, we sit down uh, together with our client and collect the requirements that are translated to high level tasks in the project backlog. At this stage, we also provide a high level estimate on how much time we think we need. For example, we contract work for eight weeks, each with one week long sprint. Uh, every sprint starts with a sprint planning where uh, the dev team and uh, the client select the task to work uh, in a given week, and we also set the priorities. Uh, during the week, we meet daily inside the dev team to uh, give each other updates. We also use those meetings as an opportunity to catch up on the small things that are happening uh, inside the team, because we don't have those random uh, meetings in an office that uh, happen next to the coffee machine. Mm -hmm. The rest of the communication uh, during the week, we try to do async using a dedicated project channel on Slack. We also uh, use Slack to give each other updates, uh, such as that we start or finish work or are in the do not disturb mode. Uh, we also uh, hold one-on-ones uh, between uh, team members to discuss specific problems related to the project. But coming back to our uh, Scrum process, at the, at the end of the week, uh, we do the sprint review where we uh, show to our client the increment. Usually this means doing a demo of a, a shiny app with new features or going through a notebook and it validates a new data science hypothesis. We also uh, hold retrospective meetings to celebrate things that went well or to discuss potential improvements. We use project board to help us manage backlog. We usually, we usually use tools available uh, from GitHub, Asana or Jira. So agile development is standard and common practice, but making it work for your team is a is a clue. So we make sure to always have well-organized project board that is reflecting, reflecting the current status of work. So basically, if I look into the project board, it should tell me who is working on what tasks and what are the priorities. Also at Absilon, we have this rule that all work needs to be documented. So whatever you are doing, there should be a corresponding task describing it on the project board. The task needs to have a clear and informative description, which is understandable not only to the dev team, but also to our clients as they have access to the project board as well. We introduced an implementation plan, which is something that is non-standard to a classical Kanban view. Basically, the person who is doing the task has to provide a description how they will approach the task and get an acceptance from another team member before starting the actual um, implementation. This way, we make sure that any proposed change makes sense and we verify it early enough. Finally, the reviewer is responsible to check if the solution corresponds 
the task requirement. As you probably noticed, our project management flow is tightly related to code review. I will assume that majority of you are familiar uh, with that concept, and I will only talk what makes it effective. We have a checklist that is part of our definition of done for a task and includes the following point. All the code needs to be peer reviewed, and there are no exceptions from this rule, so even fixing a typo in the documentation needs to be peer reviewed. Uh, we also make sure that continuous integration checks are such as linter unit tests, integration tests are configured and passed. Um, next, any added or modified code has to follow our style guide. This is especially important because it allows us to ensure quality, do more effective code reviews, learn from each other and spot bugs in the code more easily. Next, all the, change, all the changes uh, need to be tested manually or with automated tests. Further, we need to make sure that no new errors or warnings have been introduced and that readme documentation and code, code comments have been updated according to the change. We try to automate as many things as possible and we use a continuous integration with GitHub Actions to, put, to perform automatic checks and let the machines do the job. For example, we um, automatically run unit tests after every uh, code push. We also use uh, project templates to initialize the repo structure for typical project types and use pull request templates that contains a definition of done checklists from the previous slide to help reviewers do the review. So finally, we can talk about the development environment. It's the most crucial part when working in R. Otherwise, the same code can give different results on different machines. Other projects can be affected, as in a global environment, shared packages can change and crash unrelated projects. Deployment can give you a real headache uh, because establishing infrastructure can be challenging if it's not being tracked. And last but not least, your team members will waste time setting up an environment rather than jumping straight to work. This might not be a problem when starting a new project, but imagine adding a new team member in the middle or at the end of the project. To solve all of those issues, we do the development in our studio running inside a Docker container, which is fixed and dedicated per project. We leverage Docker and Rent to control underlying system, system dependencies, and R packages. Docker and Rent package together make team collaboration easy. All the changes to a Docker file or Rent log file that records packages used in the project are committed and pushed to Docker Hub or GitHub from where they can be accessed by other team members. Previous solution, however, still requires some level of DevOps skills to set up everything. So some of our clients choose uh, RStudio server because it uh, allows their data science team to purely focus on delivering value using their core competencies in a highly secure and flexible development environment. There is no secret recipe to make your data science team work efficiently. In fact, we found that using Scrum with well-organized project board, doing code reviews and taking care of the development environment is essential for project success, no matter how your team is structured. Thank you very much. And next, my colleague Pedro will tell you how to build a dashboard that can speak for itself uh, when dealing with users' adoption, you can always uh, be next to them, and uh, you, you cannot always be next to them and explain how your app will work. It's even more difficult when working remotely. 